Without a doubt, Game Boy Wars 3 is a very unique game in the Advanced War series. It's Hudson's baby, not Intelligence Systems, and so Hudson has added a number of mechanics and units inspired by their own series, Nectaris aka Military Madness. Game Boy Wars 3 can be very difficult to get into, even for an Advanced Wars veteran, so this pair of videos will aim to get a new player acquainted with its unique mechanics and units. The campaign of Game Boy Wars 3 is highly unusual for Advanced Wars. There are 45 maps in total, however the path taken through these maps towards one of the five possible endings is dependent upon how quickly you complete each map. Each map has a turn requirement, and meeting that requirement will send you to a different map compared to if you had exceeded the turn requirement. Maps can be replayed so that you can try every map at least once. However, an achievement can be unlocked if you complete all 45 maps while having only 54 maps played. This means only 9 repeats are allowed. This requires careful planning to accomplish and is the only achievement permanently missable. On GameFAQs, I created a handy guide to what missions are unlocked and how, so refer to that if you need to. But that isn't the only thing different about Game Boy Wars 3. The units you build in each map of the campaign carry over to the next. In the unit list, you'll see all your units from the previous map, and you can deploy them in the current map at no cost. Because of that, the way to play this game is to build units with more long-term benefits and keep them alive as much as possible, especially because units also gain experience and level up, like in Super Famicom Wars and the Fire Emblem franchise. Also like in Fire Emblem, most units that reach the max level can promote into a stronger unit, and this is extremely helpful most of the time. I will cover the individual units and their promotions in the next video. Like in Advance Wars, infantry units capture properties that provide you with more day-to-day -day income. However, buildings in Game Boy Wars 3 work differently in numerous ways. A building's capture points start at 10, or 20 for the HQ, and an infantry can reduce those points by however many HP they have left. But you can also increase the capture points of your own properties using the constructor unit's Develop command. Capture points control the amount of income a building gives, as well as how much HP a unit resting on it recovers, so be sure to develop your properties to get more money and recover quicker. In Game Boy Wars 3, any property within three spaces of the HQ, even cities, can produce units. However, some units are exclusive to factories. Factories also provide materials, which are a separate resource from gold, which every other property provides. Try to maintain a balance of both, or you might end up with a surplus of one and not the other. You'll sometimes come across a destroyed building. You'll need your constructor to repair the building in order to take control of it. Should you wish to attack the buildings themselves, the Tactical Bomber is the plane you're looking for. We'll cover these units in detail in the second video. Loading and unloading units works a bit differently in Game Boy Wars 3. A unit cannot unload in the same turn it loaded, however when it does unload, it can take a full turn like any other unit meaning an infantry can capture something as soon as it gets off the APC, or even fire at something if you like. This is especially nice for air units getting off the carrier. In fact, this is pretty much how unloading from the carrier in Days of Ruin works, save for the fact that the transporter can be moved beforehand. The APC cannot refuel any unit in Game Boy Wars 3. In fact, it doesn't refuel anything at all. That's the job of the supply truck. However, the supply truck only refuels ground units and helicopters. To refuel planes, you need the supply plane. To refuel ships, you need the tanker. And it cannot refuel submarines. To get supplies from any of these units, however, the unit must select the supply command, which only appears if it starts its turn adjacent to the supply unit. You can move the supply unit adjacent to the unit you want to refuel, and then have that unit use the supply command, but you cannot move the unit you want to refuel next to the supply unit and then select supply. Also take note that supply units have a limit on how many times they can refuel something before they have to go back to a factory to restock their own supplies. Naturally, buildings still provide fuel and ammo, but it will cost a very small fraction of your gold to do so. Keep all this in mind, because this game puts more emphasis on paying attention to fuel and ammo. Plenty of units can fire only once or burn lots of fuel day to day before they have to refuel. Furthermore, the supply command is a free action, so don't worry about ending your turn without doing anything after using it. Before Game Boy Wars 3, two direct combat units would fire at each other at the same time. After Game Boy Wars 3, the current turn player attacks first. 
Game Boy Wars 3 itself implemented the initiative system. Each unit has an initiative score that controls whether they fire before their opponent in direct combat, but that's not all. Movement causes the score to decrease for the turn, meaning that if you move a large distance and fire in the same turn, it's possible for the target to fire on you first. When selecting an attack target, look at the cursor's color. If you see blue, you attack first. If you see red, the enemy attacks first. If you see white, both sides fire at the same time. Speaking of combat, Game Boy Wars 3 has a very strange damage system that isn't controlled exclusively by unit matchups. When selecting a target, push the start button to see a damage preview. The numbers at the bottom showing incoming and outgoing damage are all you need to worry about. A unit's HP actually represents how many tenths of health they have left. And finally, in Game Boy Wars 3, all indirect units can move and fire in the same turn. This is extremely powerful for the few air units that can do it. By now you've noticed Game Boy Wars 3 uses a hexagonal grid instead of an orthogonal grid, much like its predecessors. However, in the previous Game Boy Wars, the hexagonal grid was mostly a disaster because there was no real way to wall off enemy units and such. Game Boy Wars 3 has a fix, the zone of control mechanic. What this basically means is that when you move a unit into a tile adjacent to an enemy, you must stop your move right there, regardless of whether you're going for an attack or not. This means you don't need a giant wall of infantry guarding your air units, and you can trap enemy units using this as well. This one is pretty simple. When attacking an enemy, you get a damage bonus when additional friendly units are adjacent to the enemy, and you'll take more damage if the attacking unit has multiple enemies adjacent to it. The bonuses are the biggest when the unit has enemies in front of and behind it, or is surrounded on three sides. Keep all this in mind when you need to do just a teensy bit more damage. In Game Boy Wars 3, joining units differs in an interesting way. To join two damaged units of the same type, move one adjacent to the other and select the Join command. The two units will pool their remaining HP and you can distribute it between them. It's a weird way of doing it, but this has its advantages in a few niche situations. Though it can be difficult to get used to playing such an unusual entry in the Advance Wars series, I think you'll find that Game Boy Wars 3 can be very rewarding to master. My next video will cover the various units and how they differ from their Advance Wars counterparts. Believe me, there's quite a number of them.